What's going on? What a beautiful day. So I wanted to talk to you about something that's a silent, silent killer of our souls in the, in the Christian community. It's one of the Ten Commandments and it's covetedness. Um, so I basically want to title this covetedness to commit con to contentment. Covetedness is waiting on what wanting something someone else has. Why aren't we content? Why do we want somebody else's husband, somebody else's wife? Why do we want somebody else's life? I, I've never understood that. Why do we why do we have to keep up with the Joneses? See, that's covetedness. All we always wants. It never sees the big picture. It wants something instant, some instant gratification. It will make you into an ungrateful, unthankful person. It's a weapon that Satan uses to make us feel it's that what we have is not enough. To me, this is the most important of the commandments because it's a matter of the heart. It starts inside of us and it works its way on the outside of us. No one ever knows that you suffer from covetedness because it doesn't have a it doesn't have a a look to it. See, this is what God looks at from the inside of us. The inward obedience. It what, what it matters what we do on the inside and not what's on the outside. That's why that's why God it, 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 Jesus Christ said, if we think it whatever man think of in his in his heart is ultimately who he ultimately is so i was looking at a passage here i'm in hebrews 13 verse 5 keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have for he said i will never leave you nor forsake you he is jesus christ here's a better one First Timothy six, um, six verse six through eight. Now there's a there's a great gain in godliness with contentment, for we are brought nothing into this world, so we cannot take anything out of this world. So it's so funny to see people accumulate so much money and wealth, and and they take nothing out. There was a a story um, in the, in the past uh, couple of weeks, and in it and not past couple of weeks, but since the coronavirus, of a of a millionaire. Um, that committed suicide because he felt isolated that he couldn't go out and do the things that he wanted to do. He was never content at what he had all around him. He got, he's a millionaire, but that's the problem with contentment. Money is not, money doesn't help. Rockefeller once said that when, when they asked him how much, uh, how much more money did he want? Because he was already a millionaire. He said, he wants endless money. It's never enough. So when are we content? When are we content at what we have, the, the house, the wife, the children, you know, the, um, the, the business, the job? When are we content within being blessed at what we have? If your values are in things that you, that you have, you'll never be happy. This Arizona millionaire burned down his, con, his, his $3 million home and killed himself because he wasn't content at what he had. Um, it, it, Ecclesiastic 5, um, 512, sweet is the sleep of a laborer, whether he eats a little or much, but, but full stomach of a rich man will not let him sleep. Jesus said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in abundance of possessions. That was Luke 12, verse 15. So again, I'm asking you, when are you content? You may not have what the rich people down the street have, but you have a roof over your head. You have food in your refrigerator. Your kids are healthy. You're healthy. Your parents are healthy. Why do you why do you need to have the dog, the cat, all the cars to be happy and be content? See, if we see God, truly if we see God, he will provide all the desires of our heart if our heart is in the right place. That's the thing, if our heart is in the right place. He's not going to give us these things if we, if he knows that we're going to worship this stuff. God seeks God 
God looks into our heart, period. That's what he does. He looks into our heart. So if, if right now you don't have something that you've desired, I'm going to ask you to examine your heart. Chances are your heart is not in the right place for those things. You desire a husband, but your heart is not in the right place right now. Because God knows that once you get this husband, you're not going to even be content because you're going to want this husband to be a super, super Christian or a super pastor. And he's just, he's a good man that serves God with all his heart. But you're not content because you're looking at the way T.D. Jakes and his wife is or Sarah, Sarah Roberts and her, her husband is. Or you're looking at some, t some TV show and seeing how other celebrity uh, wives are and you think that they have the best life when actually you have the blessed life. When are we going to be content at understanding that in our singleness, God is working in us to do something much greater that right now marriage is not going to benefit him. When are we going to be content? Paul says in Philippians 4, 11, verse 13, I'm not saying this because I, I am in need for I have learned to be content. Whatever in, in whatever circumstances I've learned to be content. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content and in any and in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in, in plenty or living in want. I can do all these things through Christ Jesus who strengthened me. And what he's talking about is, is learning to be content through Christ Jesus. Listen, we all have dreams and aspirations. I have dreams and aspirations. I, 2020, I wanted to do some big things. But I was content as doing little things. The Bible says, do not despise small beginnings. You know, because God knows if you can, if you can do a little, if you can do a lot with a little, then he's going to give you a lot because he knows that you're going to, you're going to be a good steward and you're going to be content with what you have. You're not going to keep, you're not going to be depressed because you want more and more and more. Be content, family. Be content. Stop looking at these reality shows. They're poisoning your mind. Stop looking at this stuff because it's making you think that they live in a blessed life and they're not. They're living a messy life. Trust and believe. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. All right, fam. Have a good one.